Hey, Dr. Amy here. Your brain is heavily impacted by medical menopause and no one is talking about this. In this video, I'm showing you exactly what you need to know about your brain or your brain function after medical menopause. Plus, this is what you can do to reverse or prevent the side effects. So whether you've had a hysterectomy or been medically put into menopause as part of your cancer treatment, this video is for you. If you're experiencing brain fog or chemo brain, you are so not alone. You are not going crazy. What is happening to you is quite real. Brain fog, trouble finding words, struggling with multitasking, just forgetting things you usually never forget. These can all be attributed to medical menopause. It's frustrating, yes, but it's temporary. Your brain is going through major adjustments. In this video, I'm going to explain why it happens, what to expect, and most importantly, what you can do to support your brain through it. When there's a rapid drop in estrogen, even more rapid than in natural menopause, it can be a big shock to your body. Now, estrogen is commonly thought to be a reproductive hormone, but it's a major player in your brain health as well. It influences how we think, feel, and how we remember things. It regulates neurotransmitters like dopamine or serotonin. And this is why we see mood changes like depression or anxiety after medical menopause. It also regulates neuroplasticity which is your brain's ability to form and make new connections. Plus, it regulates blood flow and it regulates glucose metabolism, which influences your brain's energy and functioning. A lot of different pathways impacting your brain and brain function. So if you're asking, is this normal? Is this permanent? Is my brain going to be okay? Here's what you need to know next. First, the good news. This is not permanent. And I want to emphasize this. Cognitive impairment related to medical menopause is temporary. Yes, your estrogen will stay low, but your brain does not stay foggy forever. It adapts. Over time, your brain learns to function very well at lower estrogen levels. Most cancer survivors report that their memory, their functioning, their multitasking, it returns back to baseline. Here's something that's rarely talked about, but it's encouraging. Even though women experience a drop in cognitive function after medical menopause, they still, on average, perform cognitive better than their male counterparts, particularly in areas like verbal memory, processing, and multitasking. So while you might notice changes compared to your own baseline, you're still functioning at a very high level. You have not lost your edge. You're just simply navigating a big adjustment. But the good news is that it will come back to normal. It can take weeks, sometimes even months, but your brain is resilient. It's constantly rewiring and adjusting. And with that right support, you can feel like yourself again. Depending on the symptoms you have, you need to seek out a different solution. Now, of course, with many different pathways and neurotransmitters being involved, there can be many different symptoms. You might have short-term memory lapses, like forgetting where your phone is, or you might have a hard time finding words, like the words just won't come out. Or maybe you have a hard time focusing or staying on task. Perhaps you have trouble multitasking, like in a busy environment, or maybe you're just tired and exhausted, even with simple tasks. These symptoms are terrible, but there is a solution. Let's talk about that next. You have options, brain exercises, supplements, lifestyle adjustments, toxin avoidance. So let me tell you about each of these options. First, brain exercises. Start by training your brain with new challenges. Your brain needs stimulation to grow. The best way to support neuroplasticity is to challenge your brain with new tasks. Like a push-up at the gym, you need to work out your brain, especially now. Here's what I mean. Learn something new. Learn a musical instrument like piano or guitar. Take up knitting or crocheting. This will also improve your fine motor skills and your focus. Study a new language, even if you're using an app for 10 minutes a day. Write or draw with your non-dominant hand. This will create new pathways in your brain. Do puzzles, memory games, or crosswords on a regular basis. Even short bursts of cognitive exercise can really improve your cognitive function. You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't even have to be good at it. What matters most is that you're engaged. Your brain is like a muscle. Use it and it gets stronger. Okay, but next is supplements. There are great evidence-based supplements to support cognitive function, but here's the catch. These supplements cannot replace a misaligned diet. If you do not know the specifics about your diet, the exact macronutrients, micronutrients, calories, then you need to ensure they are aligned. 
start here. Now, if you need support with that, you can apply to the Cancer Freedom Program. I'll put the link below. We do a deep dive into your nutrition and this is where you can get the support with that. Once you've done that, then consider these supplements for cognitive function. I'm gonna link up all of these supplements below so you can see exactly which products that I would suggest. Now, the B vitamins are a perfect place to start. I would start by taking vitamin B12, 500 micrograms a day, plus folic acid, 600 micrograms a day, and vitamin B6, 900 milligrams a day. There's also good evidence to show that omega-3 can really support cognitive function. I would start by taking an omega-3 fatty acid. This should include 1,000 milligrams of DHA plus 500 milligrams of EPA every day. And lastly, vitamin D. This helps to optimize your brain function, plus it's gonna reduce your risk of a cancer recurrence. It's also essential for bone and immune health. This is a great option without a doubt. Okay, but let's move on to lifestyle changes that you can make right away to support your cognitive health. First is to protect your sleep. Sleep is when the brain consolidates memory. It clears out waste and allows you to reset for the next day. Without enough deep, restful sleep, those connections can't be made. So of course, you've heard the tips to improve your sleep. Things like to keep a consistent bedtime and wake up time, to avoid screens in the bedroom, to limit your caffeine after 2 p.m., to use blackout curtains or white noise machines. But you know all of these things. So the trick is to actually do them. And next is to stay social. Social interactions are incredibly stimulating for your brain. Conversations require memory and emotional regulation. It also requires turn taking and quick thinking. These are all so good for cognitive exercises. Regular social engagement is going to help reduce isolation, improve your multitasking, boost your mood and your motivation, and enhance your verbal fluency. You don't need a huge social circle. Even small moments or connections, like phone calls or book clubs or walking groups. These can make a real difference. Okay, and next is to move your body. Exercise is critical for your brain. Physical activity increases blood flow to the brain. It promotes new brain cell growth and it improves executive functioning. You don't need to run marathons, walking, yoga, swimming. Even just 20 minutes a day is gonna make such a massive difference. Okay, but does brain fog due to medical menopause affect some people more than others? The answer is yes. Certain individuals are gonna be more vulnerable to these cognitive function changes. If you have a history of sleep disturbances, anxiety, or depression, you may be more likely to notice cognitive disruptions. Now, you know estrogen helps regulate your mood, your sleep. So when estrogen significantly drops, you can see worsening of pre-existing conditions. You may feel more anxious or irritable, maybe even more emotional emotionally reactive. These mental health shifts can further decrease cognitive function. This doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means that your brain is carrying more weight and it needs more support. Next is to cut down on alcohol and caffeine. Alcohol and caffeine, they really mess with your brain and the effects of them are often magnified during medical menopause. Alcohol can impair your memory, it can disrupt your sleep, and it can worsen depression. Caffeine can spike anxiety, it can raise your cortisol, and it can interfere with your rest. So start by reducing your intake gradually. Notice how your focus, your mood, or your emotions how they change. Okay, but what about specifically for cancer survivors? Do tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors, do they cause cognitive impairment? Do they result in a lasting decline in cognitive functioning? This is a common fear, so let's address this head on. If you're taking tamoxifen, then the most current literature shows no effects on your cognitive function. Now, some people do experience brain fog early on, but for most, this improves once your brain gets used to the decline in estrogen levels. But if you're on aromatase inhibitor, like anastrozole, letrozole, or eczemestane, then there are a few things worth noting here. Studies have suggested that eczemestane, a steroidal aromatase inhibitor, carries a lower risk of dementia or cognitive decline. This is compared to non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors like anastrozole or letrozole. So if you're on a non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor and you're noticing significant cognitive decline, then you may want to try a steroidal aromatase inhibitor. It may be worth having a conversation with your oncologist about. An 
important takeaway here is that you have options. You deserve to feel sharp and present and cognitively well. Okay, and look, medical menopause can feel like a loss, a loss of hormones, a loss of control, even a loss of identity, but it's also an opportunity. This is an opportunity to be curious about your brain, nourish it, challenge it, support it in new ways. This is not the end of your cognitive sharpness. Your brain is healing, your mind is adapting, you're still you. Actually, you're wiser, you're braver, and you're a more resilient form of you. Okay, so now that you know all about the cognitive effects of medical menopause, the next thing you need to dive into is right here. Click the link here and I'll see you in the next video.